Hello and welcome to this incredible episode of the official podcast. We're going to do something never before seen on the internet, never ever attempted, never even considered by modern humanity. We're going to dis discuss anime. <laughs> Because Jackson, yeah, I thought Jackson we doing that. waddled in here like a toddler, pacifier in his mouth, Radler in his hand, his little baby fist barely clenching its fingers together because the motor skills aren't there yet. And he said to me the maybe the most childish, most uneducated opinion I've ever heard in my 30 years of life. He said, and I quote, not only do I have sex with animals, but I don't <laughs> like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Jackson, can you explain that? Both extremely related. That's why I said them in the same <laughs> sentence, clearly. Yeah. Uh, I, I was probably too busy having sex with animals when I right, was right. trying to watch JoJo, so obviously. Right, because only a like man it. who fucks pigs would not like that show. It's yep, just it's it, fact. That's, that's, that's true, that's true. No, what, what do you want me to say? I didn't like it. I, I, I wasn't intending for this to be a giant conversation. I was just telling you that I didn't like the show that you constantly talk about. Oh, yeah, I, I respect your opinion. It's fine. <laughs> so I, I, I watched four episodes and it was the most boring, just wha like needlessly wacky, but also slow piece of shit I've ever seen. In it. Well, okay, that might be that might be a bit much, but it was it was pretty boring. And I didn't yeah, like the, it. I the didn't biggest want to complaint, the biggest complaint of part one I've garnered from talking to other people is they feel it's slow. And if that's the case, just power through it, because part two is a masterpiece and you need part one to set it up so i, re I really hate the just wait uh attitude though i just want it to be good from the beginning just just hook me from the beginning and then i'll watch it i yeah. think it That's is but i liked part it, one it, yeah i also like part one a lot did you like the other parts charlie i liked part two i didn't like part three very much and i very much disliked part four but part five has been good i liked it oh you started, started part five so no, I finished part five. I oh, liked nice. it a lot. Nice. So, Andrew, yeah. uh, just to bore the fuck out of Kyra a bit longer, what, sure. what's your favorite part of JoJo's? Like, what, what makes it a good thing? Because maybe, maybe it will Ooh, sell me boy. on watching it. Uh, what I appreciate about JoJo's is that it's more of a framework for whatever kind of story a Rocky, who's the creator, wants to tell. Um, while every part is very similar, they also are different enough that they feel very self-contained, which I appreciate. Uh, having said that, my favorite part is part two. It's basically Dragon Ball Z meets Indiana Jones. And there's just an incredible amount of adventure through the whole part two. It just never stops, like, feeling like this big, grand-scale, fun, epic thing. I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's got the best sense of fun of all the parts, I think. That didn't really sell me. I don't want to watch Indiana Jones, but anime. Sorry, all right. passing. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine, Sorry. Jackson. It's just, you know, in the future, if we discover something unscrupulous about you, something that lands you in jail, like, I don't know, tax evasion or something, I would not be surprised. But beyond that, I respect your opinion. You don't you think the animal fucking would get me put in jail? Well, let's be realistic. Don't you guys remember when Jackson was in trouble with the Australian IRS for his taxes? <laughs> I don't remember that. I, I, don't, Wait, I don't know when? if I'm legally allowed to talk about it. <laughs> Did you in case they find taxes? Out. No, I didn't evade taxes. It was just how our tax situation uh, with the podcast was originally for like the first two years. Oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I, I did actually get into trouble about it. Like I sorted it out uh, with the with the tax people and I wasn't like stealing money or anything like that. It was more so it, was just, it yeah. wasn't the proper procedure. Properly reported. Well, yeah. No, but I, I ended up getting to, the the issue was that I was getting taxed way more than what I should have been getting taxed. So I was the one that was getting fucked over regardless. It, it wasn't like illegal. I was just doing it in the most stupid way possible so that I was getting taxed Wait. four times the amount of what I should have been because <laughs> all of the money was coming to me originally and then I was sending it out to you three. And so the government was seeing the, the money all going to me initially and taxing me on that. So... We, uh, we've, we've fixed it since then, though. We all pay more taxes than we should, Jackson. I feel you. Yeah. Well, yeah, but me um, four times as much <laughs> originally. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Are we, uh... Jackson, you had a topic that you made me read, so did you want to talk about that? 
Yeah, so Activision is now been purchased by Microsoft. Not that one, you dickhead. Well, okay, I can't <laughs> stop with that one. <laughs> How about that news, guys? Did you, well, did you, no, did what you do you mean, video? Kaya? We just went from anime to video games, your two favorite topics. <laughs> no, that's fair. It just Jackson DMs me late last night going like, dude, there's this TikTok drama. Can you read up on it so you know all about it tomorrow? And I, like, I sat down and fucking read this stupid bullshit. But yeah, Ooh, we can talk about activism. So CNMA and Jack Wright? No, I don't okay, know what those uh, are. Oh, oh, for one. Okay, what is it? Jackson? Yeah, we'll get to it. Let's. No, let's wait, get I, I want to know what that is now. The way. Well, yeah, no, fine. I want I to know what you sent Jackson or Kaya. Uh, fuck Kaya. What was it called? It was like a uh, West End the West Elm Caleb yeah. guy on TikTok who yeah, I guess has been dating a bunch of women and those women are pissed off now. So you tell it. Mm -hmm. So it was basically a woman made a TikTok post about West Elm Caleb, a uh, man notorious in New York for dating a bunch of women at the same time and then ghosting them when he was bored of them. Uh, and, and like, it wasn't discovered how widespread West Elm Caleb's actions had been initially. But as soon as she posted the, the like, deets to tiktok people came out of the woodworks all claiming that they were also victims of west at home caleb and he's uh, yeah. skyrocketing. tiktok users that's the most reputable bunch you know not jumping on trends or stealing content or anything no that would never no, my, happen so my major issue with it was that none of these relationships were exclusive or claimed to be exclusive uh they were like just two dates so he was just dating a bunch of women just like casual dates which I think is perfectly flirting, fine so. as long as... Yeah, wait, uh, wait, wait. People are upset about being ghosted after only two dates? That's nothing. Yeah, That's absolutely so. nothing. Yeah, they're claiming he's a like a, a, a predator and stuff like that, and it's kind of fucking Jesus. insane. Jesus. Um, yeah, like nothing was exclusive, and they were just like Tinder dates and stuff, so he was he was fine. I, I thought it was fine that he was like dating oh, these women like and just ghosting them. He was love bombing me, and he was, you know, he would send us a <laughs> Spotify love playlist. Love bombing. <laughs> love bombing is a term you use yeah. for cults. So when you join a cult, they quote unquote love bomb you, which means they show you a ton of attention and love to ah, like lure okay. you more in. Also abusers, and right? sometimes they use it to. Yeah, it's like a tactic of look how much we love you. You're so amazing. Don't we show you more attention than your own family? You in should other ditch words, them. we're not your family now. <laughs> In other words, your date was nice to you? Oh, God. That's so terrible. Until he ghosted you. Oh, well, no. Well, love bombing is different than just being nice, but love bombing, the like the term they use here, they're literally accusing this guy of gaslighting women by being nice to them and I guess then having <laughs> sex with them on a date and then ghosting them. Like, yeah, I'd, <laughs> it may be ungentlemanly, uncourteous, douchey, and asshole behavior, but it's not fucking yeah. rape. It's yeah, also extremely fuck. fucking it's common. It's extremely mm -hmm. common as well. You go on some From dates. Both you genders, by the way. You end up fucking and then you go, oh, wait, the connection's not there. I was just horny. I don't want this anymore. It's usually polite to say goodbye or explain that you're not interested in dating anymore. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Madame, that pussy was not doth sodden enough. <laughs> yeah, but ghosting someone, that's like enough of a message. If you're saying like, hi, hello, you there for days on end and you don't get a reply. That's your hint. That's a cold shoulder. Yeah, He's not really. interested in you anymore. And also, if you're on Tinder, what the fuck did you expect? That you were going to move in together and buy a house on Zillow or something? Like, it was I'm never sorry exclusive. To say this, it was never exclusive. exclusive. I don't know why they had the idea that it was exclusive and why they like, uh, why they think they were cheated on or anything like that. They say like he was talking to other women while he was going on dates with me. He had a twelve p.m. with Sarah while he was on a nine a.m. with Georgia. <laughs> it's like who? Well, <laughs> none of this so was Jackson, exclusive, so it doesn't matter. Jackson, weren't you going to cover more of the scope of this? Aren't companies getting involved with this oh, shit yeah. now? Yeah, that's that's the thing that really frustrated me. I hate these fucking co these. Twitter corporation um, profiles that just jump on the bandwagon as soon as possible for those easy impressions. Like they, they, they were uh, the, the fucking corporations were hopping on this real quick, posting stuff like, 
attention West Elm Caleb victims using the word victims <laughs> Jesus Christ yeah. sustainable f- sustainable farmers treat their <laughs> girls like they treat their soil zero toxic behavior <laughs> this is from Daily Harvest Jesus well, you, know, you know what really tickles me good about that imagine this is a constructive narrative so I have no context for any of this I haven't read much of it except for these tweets that Jackson's been posting what if this is just a group trying to harass their friend named Caleb and and like these companies are getting on board with it so now these companies are liable for joining in on a literal harassment campaign well even if it's not against their friend what like it's it's i from my perspective it's unwarranted harassment already yeah. you're making a a private situation public that doesn't warrant it being you know public there was well, nothing plus really evil guy, or malicious it, about this the guy's now getting doxxed, apparently, along with his oh, company. No. I don't know his real name, but West Elm is apparently where he works, and he's like a furniture designer or something? Mm-hmm. Furniture designer yeah. or architect or some shit. Yeah, he's getting doxxed, and ap- apparently he privated or deleted all of his social media profiles ever since. But he has been sending some of the women uh, apologies, and one of the women said, you know, I actually ghosted him, and he sent me an apology assuming that he was the one to ghost me, so he didn't even remember me. <laughs> And then she got mad at that. Oh my god! How, how are people Christ. not? How are people not empathetic? This sounds like sad. This doesn't sound right. Because if, if a person likes baby, God, if a person is fucking removing their social media accounts and apologizing to people, and your response is to get mad, like what the? Well, fuck? when you oh, when you, can you never, think never apologize when the game of telephone. Universe, but- when the TikTok game of telephone has turned this fucking small, insignificant act of like going on dates with different people into being a malicious, violent, abusive, gaslighting, you know, douchebag, then you you act from a point of like moral superiority. But oh yeah, in this it's, case, it's, it's, not it's high school cool. telephone game. This mm-hmm. fucking little incident happens. It finds its way onto the internet, and then as people pass it around, it's it's what we talked about in previous topics. How many people do you think don't even know what the phrase "West End Caleb" means? They just say it because it's popular. I bet you tons of people, tons and tons of people on TikTok probably have no fucking idea what "West End Caleb" means. But they go, "Oh, if I put it in my video, it'll get views." Ha ha! West End Caleb got him. Yeah, they they never have any idea. They don't look into yeah. it. They just it's, it's just to leave cringe. whatever it's comes also, across there. It also reeks of like entitlement. You're not entitled to the guy replying to you if he's giving you the cold shoulder. Just fucking move on. That's like, oh, he has to reply to me. How dare he not text me back? That's like incel logic. Why is she yeah. ghosting me? This fucking Stacy. Like, I know. okay. Whatever. To be fair, the origin the original post um, that started all this. Uh, from what I remember, her main point wasn't the ghosting. Like she, she at the beginning of it, like admitted that she ghost guys, and like this Caleb guy was just another notch in her belt or whatever. She said something like that. I can't remember the exact wordage, but um, her her issue was that he was seeing other women while he was also seeing her. But again, if it wasn't exclusive, if there was no like agreed upon exclusivity, <laughs> then it does. It literally doesn't matter. This whole don't thing from top to bottom it is still a pathetic fuck. anyway. Who gives it doesn't a seem shit? That pop- it doesn't seem that popular. So I just looked it up. There's only like nine or ten videos in total, and none of them have that many views. And two of them are talking about how weird it is. So is it really that big of a like thing? Yeah, I saw it all over mm. Twitter when I when I this was like two days ago. Whenever I posted it on, mm. you know, I just checked TikTok. I think maybe, and th- again, I don't know the situation. Maybe it started kind of small on TikTok, but then hit Twitter, and obviously they blow everything up and make like mm. absolutely nothing turn into something. Yeah, it's possible. I, I I'm I don't have TikTok, so I mostly, well, entirely saw it on like Twitter and people retweeting it and stuff. But it got. It, it did get big on Twitter, like that, you know, tens of thousands of likes and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I'm not doubting that. I'm just wondering if it was ever like a big thing on TikTok because it seems like Twitter ran with it. Because again, scrolling through the West Elm Caleb shit on TikTok, there was not much. And it did you wasn't do West that popular. El- West Elm E L M? Yep, West Elm Caleb. Fucking Weird. big brands are getting in on this too. HBO Max tweeted about it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, what did they the say? Fuck. So they posted a picture of oh, it's uh, West End Caleb. West by the way, West sorry. Elm. Well, it's West Elm. Um yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I well, don't care. Jackson lied uh, to me. It doesn't matter. It, it's just fucking forgettable meme that's gonna no one's gonna remember this in a week. Anyway, HBO Max put 
a picture of Sex in the City of some like douchebag guy in a leather jacket talking to a woman, and they just put West Elm Caleb strikes again. Wow. Got him. Wow. Must have took the whole and department then right after, to come over that one. And then right after, they reply to their own tweet advertising that Sex in the City is now on HBO Max. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, this is the reality we live in. A really I, unfunny I premise is taken to the nth degree to make an advertisement for you. Fuck what, yeah. What the, what the fuck is <sighs> Peacock TV? Uh, a joke. It, it, it's a fucking joke. Is it? No, what, what is it? Is it it's, it's a meme? It's a, no, it's a te- it should be. It's a terrible streaming service. They have like maybe two shows that anyone will ever want to watch on Peacock. I fucking I don't remember why, but I did download or uh, subscribe to it or whatever for one movie, and I can't remember what it was now. But it was such a waste of money because they have nothing. Who's it owned by? Uh, I'm checking. MSNBC. Prob- yeah, yeah, probably NBC because the Peacock's their logo. Yeah, it's NBC. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they come name. They made they made a uh, post about him as well on on their Twitter, saying to everyone who was hurt by West Elm Caleb, you know what to do. And then the the suspicious eyes looking left emoji, and it's a picture from some TV show with the caption saying, "Cause I turned into a wolf and I ate him." So Peacock TV is advocating for uh, oh, murder cringe. of Caleb. <laughs> this is really know, embarrassing. So fucking everyone cringe, involved dude. in this should really feel embarrassed. This is incredible. Cringe. My wow. God. Caleb's the real victim here. We need to find Caleb and. Make well, sure what if okay. we saved him money by using honey in online shopping? Would that make him oh, feel better? He'd, he'd probably, probably like that. Happy. He'd probably love that. If you out there listening are a Caleb, or you don't have to be, you could be a, a John, a Sam, a Bill, a Wendy, a Mark, a Zuckerberg. Hey, everyone's got to save money, no matter who you are, no matter how many houses you buy to not have to have neighbors. It doesn't matter. Everybody shops online. That's the modern world. You wonder how I know you're not a farmer in a third world country without internet? Because you're listening to this show. And if you're listening to this show, that means you shop online and you can use Honey. It's a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, tech, gaming products, fashion brands, even food delivery. If Honey finds you a working coupon, you can watch your prices drop. I recently bought some audio equipment with Honey, and I just sat there. I barely used any calories. I kept all of my incredible food consumption in my body, didn't have to expend a single cacao. Moving around, going to a store, walking through Target and saying, yeah, that looks okay, I guess. No, I got to buy exactly what I wanted and let Honey save me some money on that audio equipment. Honey has found over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. And if you don't already have Honey, you could straight up be missing out on free savings. It is literally free. It installs in a few seconds. If you get it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. Let's wrap this up. My acid reflux is bothering me. Oh, thank you, honey. Right. Thanks, honey. You know, honey, honey. You. I'm gonna get some tums with honey. Let's go. Yeah, but these corporations fucking suck. I hate. I like. I hate them. I hate the Twitter. Do you think Wendy's? I hate do you think Wendy's ruined the internet for really? Yes, doubling yes, down on yes. that back when it started. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was gonna happen eventually anyway. It wasn't like a crazy inventive idea. But yeah, I don't know. The social media interns who are actually in charge of running uh, corporations, Twitter accounts and such, those people are responsible for a majority of the cringe that's synthesized into the world. It's truly humiliating. So do you think they create situations like West Elm, Caleb? Like they? No, I, I just think they latch onto anything like this and then blow it out of proportion so they can pluck their stupid fucking companies. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah, like whenever is... you go on Twitter, the 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 like indie version of that uh, is like when you go on Twitter profile, uh, Twitter tweets that have like you know 
tens of thousands of engagements and then you click on it and the profile that had posted it were it uh follows up that tweet with like a whole bunch of links to like vibrators and etsy's and stuff like that oh, you know, i like hate those yeah small little advertisements and stuff and they only get paid like two dollars for those so it's like really desperate and sad i hate <laughs> twitter is just such a dumb fucking platform yeah it really is well this whole dumb mm-hmm. drama is fucking dumb well, those women are clowns, and I don't know. I'm sure Caleb is probably a douchebag, so I don't really care. So, uh, but Kaya, explain to me why is it more empowering for women to, like, if this was a woman, uh, it would be like super empowering. But when when oh, Caleb yeah, does it, he's evil. like, I don't know what the male version of slut shaming is, but if this was a woman, everybody would be like, "Yeah, you girl, girl, slay! You don't owe no man a message back. Fuck those incels." It's like, okay, you're doing the reverse. Plus, I'm sorry to say this, but if you're on Tinder as a woman, the men on there they're not gonna like look at you as a long term prospect. All you are is a human flashlight to them. That may sound a little harsh, but all they're thinking is, okay, I'm going to buy your dinner and then maybe she invites me back to her place and then tomorrow I'm not going to text her back. It's just normal procedure. This guy isn't doing anything like horrendous. The internet has created a machine where it's not enough to build ourselves up. We actively have to hurt other people because in this no. scenario, yeah, people would wow. be upset. It, it's just how it works. Because in this scenario, think about it, before we had social media, people would be upset, they'd be frustrated, but this would never be a thing. But now, thanks to the internet, we can have an entire national harassment campaign around a very minor incident. I disagree, Andrew. I think it would absolutely be a thing in pretty much every high school in America. Uh, but but it wouldn't it. leave the high school. No, yeah. exactly. Exactly. The internet is just high school. It's just <laughs> it really is. Really not, not wrong. Yeah. You're not is, wrong at all. It is literally <laughs> high school, and people people aren't growing up now. That's the saddest thing. We've got thirty year olds acting like fourteen year olds. We got no, we got even older people in their like fifties and forties and such. They're still acting like children. It's insane. <sighs> they rewarded for it. Yeah. Whatever happened to the fucking Twitter? At some point, Twitter introduced like a rule that you can't release people's private information or photos of them without their consent. That doesn't seem to be uh, an effect at all. They probably overwrote that rule once they introduced NFTs for your profile pics. God, that is so awful. So that's just going to be the next year, right? NFTs just aren't going away. Oh, no. God, no. No, unfortunately. We've we've discussed it to death. They're free money. Why would you ever get rid of an opportunity for free money? But uh, every... I genuinely don't see any like respectable person talking about them in anything other than a extremely negative light. Right. So. And then you buy and sell them from unrespectable people. It's free money. There's no reason for them to go away for anybody. Yeah. Did you did you see that Square Enix was uh uh, they, they wrote like a massive fucking essay. The president of Square Enix wrote a massive essay about how how uh, video games are going the way of NFTs and 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 <laughs> games will now adopt a play. What was it? A play to earn play model. To earn. Yeah, yeah. That's oh what it was. God, really? Uh, that's it's a hundred percent coming. There is a zero percent chance that NFTs aren't going to gaming. Like they've Ubisoft tried. Stalker tried, and pretty soon everyone else is going to try, and it's going to be pushed through no matter what. Now, is that just the next evolution of games as a service? No, it's just uh, the next evolution of microtransactions, really. I mean, it's the mm, right now, yeah. the NFT ideas are, what if we gave you skins that you own? Which is like, you know, what makes that different than just a skin that I have in Fortnite? You know, I can't do anything just because i have the receipt that this is the original fortnite skin i own it's kind of worthless it's the same shit but they can make more money off it i hate the argument that i see for nfts where people say if i own this skin i can then take it into other games or whatever no one makes that argument because it doesn't work literally no one makes that argument that was mike shinoda who posted imagine with nfts you get a skin in csgo that you can then use in fortnite which you can then use in halo and it's like well That'll never fucking happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm also going to throw this out there. I don't want that in any capacity. The art direction for CSGO is much different than Fortnite, is much different than a racing game. It's like, I don't want skins to transfer because then every game would look like shit. Like, just saying. Plus, from a technical standpoint, it is literally impossible. Like Charlie just said, like, those you game developers would it. have to I'm just design. saying if hypothetically you could. I don't think I'd... I think there's myself and plenty of other people who would not in any capacity want to see that. 
Yeah. But yeah, I think I think uh, sadly the good old president of Square Enix is correct and you guys are correct that NFTs are going to be a mainstay in the gaming sphere in the future because mm-hmm. if the gaming community has proven anything it is that they are just the biggest cucks <laughs> just just the <laughs> biggest really cucks are. in all <laughs> yeah. industries they they will take whatever this industry gives them and they'll have a smile on their face they can't commit to any any fucking reasonable change so i i can't wait know. for um the game developers to start blaming gamers again this is gonna be like Gamergate two or some shit, where they're gonna be like, "Oh, the oh, fucking okay. gamer bros, they did this NFT shit to us." Like nobody wants this, but they, no, the gaming industry has never stopped blaming gamers. Like they, they spit, <laughs> they spit mm, in the I face know, of. That's what I mean. I, they, I, I they constantly the modern, spit in the face that, of their consumers. I think the modern yeah, that's what gaming I mean. They're gonna blame now. us for this. They're gonna. They're gonna blame their fucking customers when the customers all unanimously fucking hate it, and it's just some people at the top forcing this on everybody. But I promise you, watch, they they are going to blame the gamers for this. I think towards the end of the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 generation, we entered a gaming dark age, and that's when all of this started. I think to the beginning of that and before, games were made by, you know, smaller teams with more passionate ideas, and they would space out their products to really diversify them or just make them good. But after a certain point around PlayStation 4, Xbox One, it became too big. Now everything's got to hit yearly deadlines. Everything's got to hit these microtransaction sales numbers. Everything has to follow this franchise. It's it, There's just too much. It's oversaturated. It's definitely going to uh, Shit. It's definitely going to work. But I think I, di- I, disagree, I disagree with that, though, that um, the end of the Xbox 360 and and like ps3 were like golden eras i don't think they were there was like the let that was no they the weren't no of... that's when it started getting bad that's what i'm oh, saying yeah okay that's yeah, the I beginning agree. of the dark age yeah early I... 360 and ps3 was good but somewhere in there it started leaning towards what we have now i think it, the 360 and the ps3 era still had some of the biggest innovation in gaming early on so mm-hmm. like if you Crobcat recently posted that video of Back for Blood versus Left for Dead 1 and 2 and Left for Dead 1 and 2 are leaps and bounds ahead of Back for Blood like <laughs> even yep. from a technical standpoint. Like the amount of work that went into those games on things most people wouldn't even think about is absurd from like sound the AI design director. Yep, like from sound design to how the AI interacts to how like they fall over. There was like, I think he said 790 unique combinations of ways you could shoot the body parts off of the infected. Whereas in Back for Blood, you can't even shoot anything more than like arms and legs off. They just fall over. They just ragdoll instantly. Like nowadays, game companies can make the easiest games because they know people will buy it regardless. They don't need to innovate they don't need to put the extra work in to make the games great or have all of this like tender love and care another one was gears of war 5 versus gears of war 1 in yep. gears 5 when you shoot glass it just like insta breaks in gears 1 or 2 i don't remember which one he compared it to shooting glass you'd be able to like chip parts of it away like everything had dynamic like destruction and just so much more going on that made it a better game whereas a modern game it just doesn't need it because gamers will buy There's shit tons. no matter what. Modern, modern, modern games obviously do have higher technical fidelity and, and, you know, look far better and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think I agree that a lot more love and creativity and care were put into games in earlier generations. There's tons of examples of that as well. I think it's Kroby Cat. It might have been another channel that did Dead Rising 1 versus Dead Rising 4. That was Crop, that was Crop Cat. Yeah. That was him. Yeah, that's another just absolutely embarrassing example of how far back that game went. And we don't we don't even have to look that far. Battlefield 2042. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my yeah. fucking god. I still can't believe that was a full release $60 triple A video game from one of the most respected shooter franchises. I can't believe they didn't even oh. bother to fix it. It's going free to play apparently already. It is. Allegedly. EA released a recent press statement where they said they are trying every idea to see how to salvage the game and one of them they're considering is making it free to play. It's not even been out for what, 6 months? It hasn't been out for two months, Andrew. It came out at the end of November or like beginning of December. I don't even remember. But yeah, what, what was that? It's insane. Well, that article title rubbed me the wrong way as well. It was like 
E- uh, it was something like EA is very disappointed in the performance of uh, <laughs> Battlefield 2042. It was like, you fucking made the game. <laughs> you don't get to act like like the audience was the issue. I You're know. disappointed in the audience for not buying your shitty game. Fucking make a better something game. Something fucking changed. And now the games that we get today are just so sloppy and so clearly rushed and there's no detail and it's just they take the shell of something people like whether it's gears or battlefield or whatever call of duty and they slap in the most nothing and just sell it fucking vanguard charlie did you watch the call of duty vanguard like launch event video where they had the people in the little like bunker room talking about it no, I did you? Oh, watch it was that. incredible. Before Call of Duty Vanguard came out, they had this little special where they took like the head of the company and some of the lead designers and some of the like audio guys and they put them in this like little sound stage designed to be like a World War II kind of war room bunker and they would sit them down with like multiple cameras and dynamic camera angles and a fog machine and lighting and have them talk about the game and try to really hype it up as like the next big World War II is back. Call of Duty's roots are back and they had a 45 minute presentation where an entire third of it was them trying to explain uh in this call of duty you can shoot bullets into the walls and you'll see the bullet holes it was one of the most pathetic things i'd ever seen and people tried to defend it too they were like well at least play the game before shitting on this like come on really everyone everyone fucking does that yeah Good Jamers. lord. It's just embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. We're hyping up technology we've had since 2006. It's terrible. Games are also taking longer to make as well. So. I no, they're not. We're getting more annual releases than ever before. No, that's just because they're on longer. Um, oh, they've got different studios working on each title with like Call oh, of Duty. I see, and what, stuff. You, I see stack, what you mean. They're on staggered releases. But um, in general, the game development is uh, longer now, definitely. And I don't know where mm. that time is being spent, especially with all the talented harassing, developers and stuff on it. Harassing employees, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, it's hard to get <laughs> work done when you have to sexually assault your employees every True, day. I forgot, I forgot that was mandated. <laughs> so let's segue into Microsoft buying Activision. Yeah. Opinions. Sure. Uh, Probably will I, only be a good thing in the long run. I'd that's say. What okay. I said. I was gonna say I was. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be a, like a controversial opinion, but I actually like the acquisition. Activision and Blizzard haven't done it. Haven't contributed anything meaningful to the industry in in like a decade at least. So uh, it's it's better. I don't know. Uh, I appreciate them being under Microsoft now more than on their own because clearly they can't do anything on their own. So at least Microsoft gets all that IP to work with now. And Bobby Kotick stepping down, so everyone's breast mm-hmm. milk is safe again. <laughs> yeah, thank God <laughs> he gets to leave with a cool I mean, was $300 anyone, million. Dollars. Was anyone a fan of either Activision or Blizzard outside of I like the games? Did anyone appreciate oh, them as a company? Worship the co- did yeah, people yeah. worship really? that company. They had Blizz, they absolutely they, did. BlizzCon, you don't remember BlizzCon? That used to be like the biggest I, event I of the year mean, next to E3. I guess I mean more in recent memory with everything well, that happened. No, I think you can trace back when people started hating Blizzard to their Diablo Immortals announcement with, do you guys have mm-hmm. phones? It was around was that before right then. I also think Blitz, the, uh, the yeah. free Hong Kong thing. Yeah, that the Hearthstone the, thing hurt them too. Yeah, that was before the free Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, the, yeah, they, 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 they were shit. definitely worshipped. <laughs> they were definitely worshipped. They were like CD Projekt Red earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the thing that's interesting from this is now uh, Crash Bandicoot might be on Xbox. Yeah. I think that's pretty interesting. No, his, his games were already released on Xbox. Um, were they? Were the new ones on Xbox? I thought they were PlayStation exclusive. They were on the Xbox, weren't they? The, the the new ones, like the Activision published ones. Pretty sure they were on Xbox. Same as Spyro. Um, do you guys think you that right. this? Huh. Do you guys think that this will lead to like a monopoly issue at all? If Microsoft keeps fuck no, no, I mean, there's still Sony, there's still Nintendo, there's still God knows how many publishers in Japan. Yeah, it's not even close. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see that take a lot that people are worried that it's yeah. becoming a monopoly no. and, and this and is Xbox a is this is a point. This is a point I didn't get to hammer home previously, but now's the best time for indie games. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it, I've got tons and tons, and I think we all do, of issues with AAA publishing and big budget games and all that that's going on now. But for indies, it's it's the what a time to be alive. It is now easier than ever to get eyes on your game, get a publisher for your game, make an actual game that stands up to other ones. It's a great time to make a game if you're an indie dev. Especially with like Games Pass and shit. Yeah, there's Games Pass, there's streamers promoting smaller games. There's the fact that you can really just do anything you want in the format and it has a market like it's it's great. We need to kind of break these big companies down a bit and have them make smaller, more focused games because that shit works. I think that's what Xbox or Microsoft, Microsoft and Xbox could eventually end up doing, especially with this Games Pass format and buying all these studios if they want constant like Netflix style releases. Um, then they should set their studios to work on smaller projects that they can churn out quicker. So I think I think it's possible that we see these studios working on more creative endeavors, I think, potentially. I always like the argument, it's uh, for movies, but it's related, that Red Letter Media often made, where it's uh, you see these $100 million box office movies that just flop, and they're just giant disasters, and there's just, you know, a lot of them barely make profit. And it's like, what if instead you made a hundred one million dollar movies? And if only a couple of them catch on, you'll make a fuckload of money. That's and exactly a lot what easier Blumhouse, to make. That's what Blumhouse does. Blumhouse yeah. is the horror horror company. They pump out the <laughs> worst horror movies of all time. But that shit costs peanuts to make and then maybe yep. makes like 10 million. And it's like, damn, we just 9x'd. Yep. And if one of them goes super viral, if you hypothetically get one that does make $100 million, you just paid for every other movie. Yeah. I mean, so Blum, why do they, Blumhouse has why got do it figured they, out, man. Why do they ever make the fucking big blockbusters then? Probably just to hold that stranglehold on the, the industry, right? So, like, there's only some companies that can make a movie like that. Mm -hmm. And they, they do turn, like, a big profit. For example, like, a uh, $100 million budget and it makes 250 mil, like... Yeah, it over doubled, and that's a ton, 150 million. Whereas a Blumhouse movie doubling's like, hey, we made 50 bucks. So it's like difference of scale. There's also it's not also entirely corporate greed. Sometimes if there's a director who wants to make a specific movie, they'll give them a giant budget to do it, which is nice. Those are usually nice. Well, they don't. They, no, there's no there's no such thing as altruism in the industry. I don't think. I don't think they're just giving it to a. Uh, these directors because they're being nice there's definitely they're not just well, throwing they money away to make they have money. the expectation that the money will come back yeah but the director usually knows how to make a product that both people are going to watch and fits their vision i think it's uh was it tarantino who his last three movies they were just like they just gave him money and said yeah make whatever you want God, and they were shit. Oh my lord once upon a time in hollywood is <laughs> some like actual all of his movies. Trash. they make fuckloads of money though oh it's fucking bad <laughs> What about Hateful Eight, though? I don't remember Hateful Eight. I don't think I, ever, I, don't think mm. I actually ever saw that one. Mm. Man, Blumhouse makes so many movies every year. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's what been their recent ones? Because I actually haven't heard from them. Uh, so I haven't seen any of these except Halloween Kills. They did Halloween Kills in October. In October, they had four movies come out. And then November, they had Deep House and House on the Bayou. And then December, they had Hurt, an American refugee. Wait, so let me give you, let me give you a great. Yeah, let me give you a great. Uh, sorry, let me let me give you a great example. Of what I was talking about earlier, Blumhouse makes the Purge franchise. Mm -hmm. The original Purge movie, the first one was made on a budget of three million dollars. It made 90 million. Well, that's nothing. Uh, Invisible Man, like Kaya just brought up, that's Blumhouse. Budget of seven million made a hundred and forty-three million. Yeah, because it's and a good it, movie. Also, they made Whiplash. Hold on a minute. This is a good studio. Why are you <laughs> no, shit talking? I like them? This is like I'm not shit talking him. I love Blumhouse. Wait, they, they at, made Get They made Get Out. Yeah, look, Kaya, look at the catalog. Shit. <laughs> I, I <laughs> they know, made it's, some it's good it's stuff. A lot. Yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. They made Whiplash. They did. Yeah, yeah I had no, no idea. 
Blumhouse basically takes it's usually horror, but Blumhouse does take all kinds of like smaller projects. Anything that's like a small mid-level budget, Blumhouse takes. Like Whiplash is a three million dollar budget movie, and that's right in Blumhouse wheelhouse. It's one of the best movies ever. Holy shit! I I think Whiplash slaps. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, apparently they just made like a short movie thing. Oh, it's not make the that full Whiplash. Whiplash. No, it's do, like a short think, uh, version of it, which then got turned into a full movie. Do you uh, think that the uh, the idea to make Whiplash came to them in a dream? Oh, oh yeah. Have. Yeah, and that I dream... it was on a Helix mattress. Yeah, a dream they had on a Helix mattress because they were just sleeping so comfortably they were able to slip right off into dreamland without even thinking about it. I mean, that's, mm. that's how I feel mm-hmm. when I use a Helix mattress. That's how all four of the official boys... Use a Helix mattress. Do you want to sleep with the official boys? If you do, you're going to want to sleep on Helix mattress because that's the closest you'll probably get. All you can do for yourself is sleep well. I have, a, I have an old adage, and I believe this for a long time. You never skimp on things you use every day because you will fuck yourself over in the long run. Do you have an uncomfy office chair? Welcome to back pain. Do you wear uncomfortable shoes? Welcome to foot pain. And guess what? Big granddaddy of them all. Do you sleep on an uncomfortable mattress? Well, you're just fucking up your whole life right there. You sleep in that thing like what? Six to nine hours a night? And you're really going to just get a shit one? Are you insane? It's not treating yourself right. And you might be thinking out there, well, I don't know what mattress to get. There's like a million different kinds at Helix. Well, don't panic. Take a breath. Get your inhaler. All you need to do is take the Helix sleep quiz. It'll tell you what model of mattress you want. You tell them if you want it soft, medium, firm, you sleep on your side, back, whatever. Tons of different ways to figure out what kind of mattress you should be getting. You don't have to listen to me, though. You can mute this podcast because you'll sit pretty knowing that Helix was awarded number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired magazine. If you go to helixsleep.com slash official, take that two minute sleep quiz, they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash official. $200 off, two free pillows, helixsleep.com slash official. Thank you, Helix. I was wrong, by the way. Blumhouse apparently made both whiplashes, which makes them a great studio. I don't care what anyone says. Well, well, they're clearly a successful studio, so... Yeah. They're kind of like uh, the more generic version of Annapurna, I guess. Like, Annapurna is a film studio that does small-budget art house films, and they, they make a pretty good uh, return on that, but they're more, like, artistic, I guess, about it. Mm. I've got a I've got a topic. I just came back. So mm-hmm. I actually think if there was a global leaderboard for shitting and like speed shitting, I'd be towards the top ten. I was able to take a shit sub forty five seconds right there. Did you guys even realize I was gone? Yeah, I heard you Barely get up to my end. Like <laughs> I took I'm so efficient at shitting. Like I will shit no poop on my ass. The only thing that takes a while is just I have to wash my hands. If I could cut out that, like if I could sequence break that, I'd have like a literal sub 30 second shit time. Yeah, please don't stop washing your hands. <laughs> you could have a <laughs> yeah, little dog. It's not worth it. Instead of using a faucet, you could have a bowl filled with disinfectants and just dip your hands in it and immediately run back. Oh, that could be a big time save. Yeah. For the any or what if you room. just permanently, like, permanently wear like uh, medical gloves or something like that? Then you don't even. Oh, just take it off. Then Ooh. you don't even need to wear. Uh, I mean, you don't yeah. even need to wash your hands, probably. Probably. Or just don't wait. No, don't wipe. Then your hands won't touch any poopy. I yeah, just need so, to make yeah, sure. How much shit like, is there anywhere? Yeah, get an automatic wiping machine. Sit on the toilet with your hands in the air. Don't get it anywhere near your ass. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, put, no, no, no. Put your ass directly in the toilet water and then shit into the water so that oh, way it's shit, already bedaying yeah. your ass. Well, that's yeah. then I'm just gonna get fucking poopy water in my ass. And Andrew. then you put a towel around and you sprint out. Hmm. It's perfect. That's, that's, that's so much slow. longer. Yeah. yeah. Right now, my process is I can drop my pants and immediately just take a full blown shit, and I never really have poopy on my ass. It like actually cleans my ass. I feel like, and then I just get up, wash my hands, and bang. 
done. So I don't know where I'd make improvement other than wearing gloves so I don't wash my hands. But... You you need to slow down a bit and enjoy shitting time. Shitting time is like an enjoyable aspect of life sometimes. It's used to decompress. Yeah, like yeah you get fully yeah. naked when you shit, don't you? Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> it's not really part of my point. That's just more from a comfort <laughs> perspective. But it's still just an enjoyable, like, it's a primitive thing, shitting. Uh, it, I don't know. It's enjoyable. Yeah, I would never say that. For me, it's just it's just something to be conquered. Just make it quick. Get out of there. <clears throat> yeah, I usually spend, like, maybe 15 <laughs> minutes on the toilet. Yeah, it's trash. Mine depends on my Same. poopy. Sometimes I'm done in a minute or two. Other times it's a nice, like, 20, 30 minute -er. Yeah. Same. I like just sitting there sometimes just browsing my phone and playing Wordle or something. Chilling. And then washing my ass. Taking a nice shower. Nice. Okay. All right. What else did you guys have? What's Any on topics? the docket? <clears throat> We had another one, happens. didn't we? Another decent one. Didn't we bring up something know. yesterday? I think we, we brought, brought up, up the fucking the green M&M. No, that yeah, was the Activision thing, which we not talked about. Mm. Uh, Don't you guys have an issue with Bobby Kotick just kind of like fucking <laughs> getting away with what? it, more or less? Like he's getting a $300, $300 uh, million dollar payout once he leaves. And that's it. 400 just, apparently. Yeah, then he just fucks off. Yeah, life ain't fair. Sucks, but there you go. Yeah, this is a regular occurrence for rich people. Like, it's still a good thing, though. Anything that gets him out of there is fine. Is it that? Uh, he could just go to another company and sexually harass them, then. I don't think he's ever going to go to another company. Yeah, honestly, uh, at that point, He's been in the retired, industry for, like, but... 30 years. I think he could find a company to weasel his way into. I doubt it. I mean, how do you even know that his replacement is going to be any better? It's not like Microsoft has a stellar record. Fucking Bill Phil Gates Spencer used to molest does. everybody in his... Yeah, but I mean, Microsoft in general. You know, Bill Gates yeah. used to fucking molest everyone that breathes. Or they made that go is away. That he used to be fucking what? buddies with Epstein. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, Bill Gates has allegations against huh? him. You guys don't know this? No. No? Look it up. Yeah, <laughs> Look it Google up. What? <laughs> <laughs> Check the papers. <laughs> no, tell us about it. I want to know what Bill Gates did now. Yeah, tell us what you know, and I want to see how accurate it is. Let's go. Bill Gates, what, molestation, you said? I typed in Bill Gates sexual assault. I'll, I'll I typed type in, in Bill Gates molested, and my results <laughs> were a bit different, I guess. A very sad situation. <laughs> Mine were very depressing. <laughs> I, I, I googled Bill Gates bad man. Let's see what comes up with that. <laughs> it's gonna be the, all the microchip conspiracies and shit. <laughs> True. Whoa, no, the first... How do you guys not know about the this? Wait, I'm actually mind blown Go that you guys are so ignorant. I think Google's like... Uh, Bill Gates has infiltrated Google. Like, the first result was Bill Gates is a good man. <laughs> oh. So what the hell? No, but yeah, Kaya, go on. Tell us about Bill Gates. I mean, I don't remember all of the allegations, but he basically was cheating on his wife. He was being inappropriate with his secretaries. He was buddies with Jeffrey Epstein, which apparently is the reason that his wife divorced him. She was uncomfortable with his relationship with Epstein and everything. So that guy's no angel. And Microsoft um, didn't really give a fuck about any of this. And they still don't. So don't hold your breath that any of those employees are going to be any safer under Microsoft. I'd be uh, just like skeptical. I don't know. Phil Spencer seems like a good person, genuinely. Phil Spencer sure, does maybe seem he like, is. yeah, he does seem like well, he he's going to be this, wants it to be good. He's going to be the new CEO of Activision once once um what's his name leaves, Mister Molester leaves, um, <laughs> he, Kodak. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, Phil, I, I I read the other day that Phil Spencer started as an intern at Microsoft. That's pretty impressive. You don't see many interns become CEOs eventually. Is that true? He was an intern at Microsoft? At Xbox, I think. He's been there for like 30 years. Stuck in the intern closet for a while and then found his way yeah. out. Yeah, 
1988, he began his work as an intern in a number of technical roles, including leading development of Microsoft's first CD-ROM-based titles, Encarta. Wow. Aww. He's an old-timer. Yeah, no, this guy really started from the bottom. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's why I like him. He was in there with the mop, doing whatever interns... I don't know what interns do. <laughs> yeah, they clean the flipping toilets. Ba- flipping burgers. Yeah. <laughs> Harassing yeah. the interns, yeah. <laughs> no, but they, he was the victim, most likely. The interns <laughs> were probably the victims at that point. Um, oh, yeah, maybe so, he's lived it firsthand, so now he's nice. He's yeah, trying maybe. not to perpetuate it. Yeah, maybe he's seen it. Um, yeah, he's seen it firsthand and he doesn't want Microsoft to be there anymore. That's he's what also I choose the, to believe. He's, he's the only reason Xbox survived the Xbox One. Oh, absolutely. It was, he, it was an absolute disaster with the Xbox One and Phil Spencer like had to bring it back down to earth. Speaking of like sexual harassment in the workplace and stuff, what Don Matrick, the previous head of Xbox before Phil, what he did to the Xbox One and Xbox as a brand was oh. probably some of the worst harassment I've seen in the industry. <laughs> It was it was like the worst thing that could have been done for Xbox and yeah Phil Phil's corrected that ship pretty proud of the man so it's only the knowledge that an intern could know well good luck they did apparently also say that they would honor all of their agreements with Sony after the acquisition so that's nice of them mm-hmm. oh it's not it's a business thing if they didn't they'd get sued or something yeah, they'd have to pay absolutely. outrageous fees <laughs> so I know, like just nice of them, I guess, to not even bother trying to weasel their way out of agreements. Yeah, I, I always, I always like uh, Phil Spencer's Twitter because he always makes such nice posts or tweets yeah. to PlayStation. He's like, PlayStation and Sony are an important part of the, uh, you know, the gaming industry, and we really value their contributions and our friendship and relationship with them. And then Sony will just fucking ignore him, <laughs> just put him on. <laughs> they just won't talk about Xbox at all. And that's what really annoys me about the console war stuff is that Sony just gets a free pass on everything, pretty much. They've been the uh, most anti-consumer pieces of shit. No, for last that'd be Nintendo. Definitely Nintendo. Yeah, both, Nintendo both. for sure gets way more passes. But the, like it's it, not, it, Sony's also pretty bad with it. They really are. <laughs> they they, they be, are. Yeah. They are very anti-consumer. Like they charge. Uh, Xbox doesn't do this. I'm pretty sure, but they charge like a twenty dollar upgrade fee if you want to upgrade your game from PS4 to PS5. They increase the prices on PS5 games by let's, by like a standard twenty dollars. And Xbox but let's do be that honest though, literally all of them are anti-consumer. You remember when Xbox made that whole loop around policy about sharing games with friends, where it was that like was the you Xbox own one, it. Though. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're talking about. They've changed yeah. the, they've but, ratted but the they, ship. But they still implemented it in the first place. And when that happened, Sony explicitly made an advertising campaign saying, hey, you can share games on PlayStation. No strings attached. Go nuts. I hate yeah. that smoke shit. And now, and now <laughs> Microsoft has changed it. They've got the, they've got stuff like the disability controller. They've got games pass. They, they've got like sharing methods and cloud support and stuff like that. And they've got like the most robust backwards compatibility system ever made. And then all PlayStation has is this fucking YouTube video where two greasy CEOs like swap a, uh, a <laughs> game disc between each other. Yeah, but for a long time, smug. Sony had a lot of leg up on Microsoft. For example, Sony Online was free for the longest time, whereas you had to pay for Xbox Online. Mm-hmm. That was a huge but, thing during the PlayStation era. And now it's and not now free. You have to, yeah, now you have to pay for PlayStation <laughs> yeah. Online. I too. mean, again, it, it comes and goes, you know. You're championing Xbox and Microsoft today, but there's no telling if in five years they make a dumb decision where they're like, all games are NFTs and NFTs only, you know. I'm not championing them. Phil it's, would never it's do all that. money. I like what Xbox no. is doing at the moment, but I, I like both. I, I, like, I'm not, I don't have a part in the console war. I think it's dumb. Yeah. yeah. You know, they always do dumb shit. Sometimes they do good stuff. Sometimes they do dumb stuff. It's just whoever at the moment is winning. Like, I I love Nintendo, but man, they just never do anything right. (laughs) But I still love their games. games. Have you seen uh, Legends of Arceus, the new Pokemon game? Have you watched oh, like, yeah. the gameplay trailers and Not shit? Not the new gameplay, no, but I'm guessing it's awful. Didn't it, didn't it leak? Apparently it's out already, yeah. A bunch of physical copies leaking. People are already like 40, 50 hours into it. Damn. I, that, I didn't know hours? that. Are they enjoying it? Because I've only seen the screenshots of how absolutely embarrassingly it empty looks it, so 
bad. It looks yep. so bad. Um, it looks game, so fucking game bad. Game Freak cannot make a game to save their lives, even though they're in charge of the most profitable franchise in human history. It's insane. It is unbelievable. It is outrageous how in unbelievably untalented that whole crew is. Yep. Uh huh. I'm, I'm, I'm not buying if... it. I made a fucking solemn vow. I fucking put my chastity cage on with uh, Sword and Shield. I said if they didn't radically like change the game, I would not buy it. And so well, far, nothing like they they're making looks okay. I found any different. This is for what it's worth. Arceus does. Is it Arceus? Is that yeah, it, it's Arceus. Arce. Legends of Arceus. It, do, it does. It does look radically different in terms of like gameplay and stuff, right? Is that not a real even screenshot really. right there? Yeah, it's a real screenshot. <laughs> it actually okay. looks like Ocarina home. of Time. It, it does, yeah. Okay. Almost mm -hmm. worse, actually. It looks like a unit. It That's looks like a unit, like a stock Unity map. Not even in Unity. You can just toss in any water shader, and it will not be repeating itself every two centimeters. That looks humiliating. Um, I found one review of somebody who got a retail copy. This is, by the way, I'm not going to say their name, but this is the same person at some point tried to cancel Nintendo because they thought a Persona soundtrack had the oh. word retarded in it, and everybody made fun that. of them. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I don't want to give them publicity, you. so I'm just going to read the tweets. So, how is Pokemon Legends Arceus? It's the most I've enjoyed a new Pokemon game in years. And I uh, say this as someone with 1k plus hours shiny hunting in every game this generation. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's not flawless, but it's ambitious. Ah, oh, ambitious. Blah, Jesus Christ, there's like sure. 50 tweets. At the end, they say, if you were worried that the lack of reviews or hands-on previews for Pokemon Legends Arceus was because the game was not good, fear not. It's a really impressive, ambitious title. Oh my god. Nintendo fans are gonna Nintendo. Let me let me talk about something else real quick, and then I have a very strong point against Pokemon here, but I'm I'm possessed by a spirit and it's screaming at me to talk about FanDuel. Oh, can I please. talk about FanDuel oh, real yes. quick? Mm -hmm. Look. Mm -hmm. Here's the cool thing about conference championships. They're exciting. Because teams that deserve to be there are gonna be playing back and forth. Big men who were bigger than the other men are gonna be slamming their bodies into each other. That's exactly what you want to see. I am currently on the NFL division standings right now as of this recording. And I, I can see that my main men, the Detroit Lions and the Jacksonville Jaguars are currently <laughs> only, only three wins in in this season. That's like 20 games down. But I got to tell you right now, if you think an underdog truly can make dreams come true, if you think that something that's down and out can shine when the pressure's on, well, you can place a bet on them by using FanDuel. Or you can even do it with the conference championship. The NFL conference championships are here, and to celebrate, FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you 30 to 1 enhanced odds for either conference championship. Not sure if the Lions or the Jaguars are going to be in it. I'm not sure. You know, that record, maybe they'll pull it back. Who knows? But you can bet $5 to win $150 on any team to either to win either conference championship game. Just sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook, make a deposit to claim your 30 to 1 enhanced odds. Also, refer a friend, get 50 bucks. That friend, they'll get 50 bucks too. That's $100 just for having a friend. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And knowing all you handsome listeners out there, something you could do at a heartbeat. Don't miss your chance to win $150 off a $5 bet when you use promo code OFFICIAL when signing up. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, use promo code OFFICIAL, and pick your conference championship team before kickoff. 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. New users only. $10 first deposit required. Must wager in designated offer market. Max bonus $150. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG for Colorado, Idaho, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXTSTEP to 53342 for Arizona. 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat for Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT for Indiana. TN Redline 1-800-889-9789 for Tennessee or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET for West Virginia. All right. Anyway, back to Pokemon. Fuck Pokemon. Pokemon could suck my dick. Don't buy it. Don't give them money. Don't ever pay for this shit. It's all about Pal World. Have you guys seen Pal, Pal World? World? 
world. Yeah. Pal World it's looks like the greatest about. game ever made. It's a Pokemon knockoff game that's coming to Steam where they have guns and slave labor. <laughs> and you can like farm Pokemon in cages and you get into gun battles against cowboys. It looks amazing. I'm so Is excited for Pal World. No, it's coming out this year. Is it oh, just a oh, that looks neat. Is it just like a is it just like a wacky meme game? No, it's a Pokemon ripoff but with guns. And it's like actually got a development studio behind it. But these actually look like Pokemon. Like Yeah, and it looks Astro genuinely Fox. fun. <laughs> it it looks like a wave shooter but with Pokemon. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I can't advocate this game enough. This is a game where you are you're playing How a can Pokemon you advocate adventure. when it's not out. Wait, how can you advocate when it's not out, though? Because if people support it, then it'll do well if it's good. And people will want to see more of it. And a company will actually be successfully taking on Pokemon. This is not going to take on Pokemon. <laughs> no, I'm Power sorry, World's bro. the game of the future. It's a game where you'll be strolling <laughs> through your Pokemon adventure, walking around with your pals, and all of a sudden, two fucking terrorists will show up with guns and start firing at you, and your defense is you throw out Snorlax and take cover behind him because his stomach blocks bullets. As he fucking gets torn to shreds <laughs> by an MD240. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's fucking sick. awesome. It's cool, and the plot is that they use Pokemon for slave labor. They have, like, this cutscene where a bunch of, like, Pikachus are in a mine, and they're mining diamonds <laughs> and turning them into guns. It's so cool. <laughs> I love Pal World. Anyone, please, go watch the Pal World trailers. There's two of them on YouTube. This is my game of the year already. I am so oh, excited yeah. for it. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm reading the bio for the... Uh, the store steam page and it's it's talking about like survival elements and it's just a picture of a of a large pokemon just fucking eating a smaller one and like chewing on it it's so good it just looks so fucking <laughs> it's gonna be awful like it's straight up gonna be an awful game yeah. but i am ready to have fun with it you capture there's pokemon like and force them to pals. like there's yeah. a Lucario fucking building a rocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can fuse them together like Digimon to make new pals. It's so Ooh. cool. I so love this game. Was, this game was, the, was made in China. Oh, absolutely. F- it, it, it's like going to come out. Of, it's going to like... At an assembly line. It, yeah, it's going to come out. It's going to be an asset flip. It's going to be supported for a week and then abandoned forever, but I don't care. I, I oh, want wait. someone to take on Pokemon. Please. It's made by the it's made by the people who made Craftopia, which was that really fucking <laughs> shitty uh like Legend of Zelda slash Minecraft ripoff. Yep. They, they've they've done this before. Look up Craftopia. It's the exact same thing where they've taken another Nintendo property and just like Made it goofy. Fuck yeah. It's like dude. Legend of the Zelda fighting like giant skeletons and building bases in giant mushroom forests. I'm confident Pal World is going to take the gaming world by storm. Just, it's, you can't stop it. It's going to defeat Pokemon. It's going to become the highest grossing franchise. Pokemon with guns was what we needed from the very beginning. It's the only way they'll be able to protect themselves. Yeah. My only point with all this is, for the love of God, please, someone to throw Pokemon, someone make a fucking property, a fucking animal collecting game that competes they with tried. them. They tried. What was that animal collecting oh, game on Steam? Tim Tim. Tim Tim. Tim Tim. Tim Tim. Tim. Isn't Tim How Tim still Tim Tim's popular, doing? though? Don't people still play that? No. I, I played it for like no. two days, and I was pretending to be a little girl looking for a boyfriend so people would give me free Pokemon <laughs> or Tim Tim. It still works, that grift, by the way. I like think I'll the only reason Pokemon, of money. the the only reason Pokemon is at all successful is because of the um, well, the Pokemon. It's the connection to the Pokemon. Well, it was and right place at right time. So well, the so, original. Go ahead, Charlie. I was going to say, for what it's worth, Craftopia looks fucking lit. There was just a bunch <laughs> of cows going into an incinerator <laughs> through a Rube Goldberg machine. This play, this fucking game looks amazing, Jackson. Have you played it? No, I haven't. This looks really good. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised you I'm, haven't heard of it. No, I never heard of it. Pal World. But, Jackson, Pokemon took off purely because it was right place at right time. The original Game Boy games, like, for their time, they're very good, but they're incredibly glitchy. They're held together with rubber bands and duct tape. They're extremely simple. But at the time, it just capitalized on the fact the Game Boy was coming out, 
and it just hit the right market. Really nailed appealing to children, and there's just really yeah, there just really was nothing like it beforehand that really caught on in that way. I, I'm saying though, I think it's only successful still because people have that um, yeah. connection to it. Oh yeah, if Pokemon like, was started Tem- today, no one would give a fuck about it. That, for exactly, sure. that's that's yeah. why Temtem didn't have the same kind of success, and why most clones won't have the same success. Well, no, no, no. Most most clones have to uh, have to uh, fight with Pokemon. That's why they're not going to take off. Temtem in a universe where Pokemon never existed hypothetically could have been a successful game, but competing with Pokemon is never going to happen because number one, it is the highest grossing franchise on earth by a factor of $10 billion. Number two, I think is Hello Kitty at 90 billion, whereas Pokemon has over a hundred billion and makes $1 billion a year, which is as much as many major companies. Um, I, really, I really don't see fucking how Hello Kitty is up there. I've never, I haven't seen a Hello Kitty in like a decade. Merchandise. It's all merchandise. I made a whole video on this topic. The vast majority of franchises on the top earners list make it all for merchandise. Yeah. Yeah, purely if, just if, merch. If that much merch was being moved with Hello Kitty, I feel like I'd see it more like in, on well, people's shirts and stuff. Well, how often do you go to elementary schools? Yeah. Yeah. They have Hello Kitty stuff there. Kids have Hello Kitty stuff. Elementary schoolers have it. Japan is covered in Hello Kitty from top to bottom. It's everywhere. I see see Pokemon a a lot when I go out, so it makes sense. Jackson, you're not even you're not even mad about the right one. And Pan Man. Have you ever heard of Uh, that or uh, On Pan Man? No. That's the ninth grossing highest franchise in the entire world. It's unknown outside of Asia. No one's ever heard of it. Yeah, well, yeah, BTS did make a song about it, but he was still the highest, gro- yeah, one of the right. highest of all time before that song. This thing what looks the fuck gross. is it? He's, he's a pancake with like an STD for a nose. That's correct. <laughs> is that the law? No, it he's just, a, he's a like bean he bun. Zits on his face. He's a bean bun that's a superhero, and that's it. And he just hangs out and has adventures. He's basically One Punch Man for toddlers. And he is the ninth <laughs> grossing, highest grossing franchise of all time. Is he Japan as well? Yes. So Japan has the top three largest, like... Oh, they uh, have, like, the top six. Uh, Let me find the list again. I think Star Wars is, like, number seven. Yeah, Star Wars is somewhere there. I think Harry Potter is, like, number ten. Let me find it. Uh, Here we go. All right. So the top ten... The the top ten in order are Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Mickey Mouse, Winnie the Pooh, Star Wars, Mario... Disney princesses and Pan Man, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Harry Potter. Okay, there's a there's yeah. a, a so lot it's of Western Disney and Japan basically. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, and Harry Potter. In Star, yeah. Oh, Star, Star Wars. Well, Star Wars is Japan. Or Star Wars is Disney, not Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars took place in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, but it's literally all Disney and Japanese stuff. Like that's mm-hmm. it. That's the top ten. And it's number crazy. the next one is still technically also Disney. It's Spider Man, in a roundabout way. So you're not gonna play Pokemon? <laughs> no, I'm not, definitely you absolutely not. Are. You absolutely are. <laughs> no, I'm not are. buying it. Yeah, I, I didn't buy. I, I did not buy. Won't. I didn't I buy Brilliant I Diamond. You. I'm not buying this. I'm not giving them money until they you gonna, actually put the effort in. Are you gonna watch a like a playthrough or something? I have not yeah. watched anything on the diamond pearl remake so i don't care there's people streaming it i was watching awesome. it for a little while it, it this looks so boring it looks so oh, wait, boring. i want to see are they still streaming i thought like nintendo assassinates people if you do that no i mean these streams have been going for hours and hours and hours now when's it out it comes out in five days but yeah it's just being streamed on like youtube and twitch i don't see why you'd play it Really, when this month is stacked anyway, you got like Elden Ring coming up. Oh, Elden Ring's this month? It's February. It's February now. Holy Jackson's shit. Wrong. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. well, yeah, Jackson's was, always wrong, to be fair. Yeah, well, I was just, I meant this next month as in the like next a full 30 days. Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit, people are already playing this. That's nuts. It looks so fucking boring. I was perusing some of them a moment ago. Oh, my God. Speaking speaking of video games that have been absolutely like shit on launch, have you guys heard of Rainbow Six Extraction? I actually enjoyed no. it. I played it before launch oh with Matt and Danny, but I, I haven't played it post launch. What happened? No. 
It's, it's just, it looks really bad. It was like a game mode that was in Rainbow Six Siege for yeah. free. And they've turned it into like a full game that just looks so bland and boring. I haven't played it, so it might you, get might boring. Have, you might have a more like substantial opinion of it. But from what I've seen, it just looks so fucking dull and boring. I'm and watching I'm this. I'm watching one of these Arceus streams and by God, the visuals are awful. Yeah, the lighting no, it, is it looks terrible. fucking horrible. It really does look like a fucking GameCube game. Holy shit. Oh, it definitely looks worse than a GameCube game. Like, look at the world, Andrew. It actually looks like what you'd see in Nintendo 64 era. This looks like a fucking company ripping off Pokemon. This looks like Pal World, but worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's Holy the Pal World developers. That's what they had to do to get Pal World fuck. off the ground. Um, I'm going to make an official promise. And you guys, this is going to be a pretty, pretty big promise. I'm going to, I'm going to play and finish Elden Ring. It's going to be my first, uh, Souls-like completion. No, you won't. Mm. All right, never mind. <laughs> uh, you say this almost every time. No, I don't. I've never yes, said it do. before. No, I haven't. Yes, no. you do. No, I ha I've never said that before, ever. Go back and check. Well, maybe not on the podcast, but you and I used to talk about Neo and Bloodborne. You're like, yeah, I'll finish it. <laughs> well, this time I'm going to finish it and I'll, pr I'll prove it somehow. I'm, I'm looking forward to this month. There's Elden Ring, there's Horizon Forbidden West, there's Dying Light 2. There's a lot of games coming out. Ooh, Dying Light time. 2. That's another yeah, big that's one. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm excited for that. Fuck okay, yeah, first one was really good. All right, happy gaming month, oh. everyone. We'll see you next week. I was going to say Bye, next pal month. world. Do it. Come on, we have to beat Game Freak. Have fun with your Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Bobby, every, wait, pluck the Patreon, Jackson. Oh, yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes and a movie night's over there starring me and Charlie watching Bye Bye Man. This is a lot of fun. Go check it out. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.